How did you happen to get in here? I ran here. You scared the daylights out of me last night. Seems like the truth shouldn't scare anybody, man or boy. The truth? You and your screams in the night almost... What are you talking about? Now, don't tell me I imagined all that stuff. I went in those woods and I heard things. What things? I don't know. I don't know whether it was the screams you were talking about or just the wind. You leave well enough alone, son. Go in and wash up. Join us for breakfast and you can catch the school bus with me. What kind of a guy is Pete, anyway? He's always been wonderful to me. Kind and generous. For my last birthday, he sent to the city and bought me the most wonderful furniture he could buy. For my room. He's always been that way. But what about that red house? I remember hearing him talk about it a long time ago. But I've never heard him mention it since. You haven't? No. He's just warned me to stay out of those woods since I was little. Do you know anything about those screams? I don't know, Nate, and I'd be afraid to find out. You moved in with the Morgan. Okay, so I'm working there. So make something out of it. <laughs> Nerve, Nate Storm. Where were you last night when I phoned like I said I would? Working. Working? All night long? Aw, oh, Tibby, can't a guy even earn chore money at the Morgans without you throwing a fit? Not if it takes all night. Hi, Mom. See, you're not bowled over by the rush of business. Oh, things have been like this all day again. I suppose folks get tired coming and asking for things they haven't got. Look, Mom, why don't you close the store and marry Don Brin? He's a nice guy. Now, there's time enough for Don and me to get married after you're out of school and on your own. Graduation's just around the corner. Why don't you two go ahead and get married while you're still young enough to enjoy it? Shame on you, talking to your mother that way. Well, you've given enough of your life to me. You go down to town and tell Don you're ready any time he is. He's being transferred north. Well, that settles it. Harry's been courting you since I was in grammar school. If you don't marry him now, he'll meet some chick up north, and then you'll be a dead duck. Well, I've got to change. I'll be late at the Morgans. How do you like it up there? Oh, it's okay. They eat good. I mean, well. A couple of things got me wondering. How did Pete Morgan lose his leg? He fell down a cliff in the Oxhead Woods. It was a long time ago. You were still a baby. It was Dr. Byrne's first case in the valley. He amputated the leg on the Morgan kitchen table. I wonder if it's the one I ate at. That was the first time Dr. Byrne ever met Ellen Morgan. Everybody knew he fell in love with her, but nothing ever came of it. I wonder why. He's still a bachelor. I don't know. They still act like they love each other, the few times I've seen them meet. But she chose to devote her life to her brother Pete, I guess. Seems a shame. Just like it'll be a shame if you don't marry Don and go north with him. If I do, 
How long will it be before you and Tibby get married? Oh, search me. Sometimes the more I know about women, the less I know about women. Guy needs more than a high school education just to find out what they're gonna do next. Will you be staying at the Morgans again tonight? No. I'm gonna take a shortcut through Oxhead Woods by daylight. So I'll know my way back here tonight. Well, if you should change your mind, would you care if I go down to town and talk things over with Don? You do more than talk things over. You come back here a bride. We don't want any dead ducks in the family, do we? <laughs> Bye. We always have more eggs than we can use. Meg. I guess Nate asked a lot of questions on the way to school this morning. Yes, but only questions I've wondered about myself. Things you've never explained. Can't you tell me, Pete? Well, I didn't know that anything troubled you. Why are you suddenly questioning things? Because of him? Maybe. Well, maybe he won't come back. I think he will. I hope he does. May. All of a sudden, you seem so grown up. I guess I don't like to see it happen. I wish you were a child again. I wish you needed me just as you did then. I don't want you ever to grow away from us. You mean everything to Ellen and me. I want you to be happy. I love you both very much. today. I had to go home first. I came here through Oxhead Woods. Yes, that would be the quickest. Daytimes. Or any other time. Don't put so high a price on courage, son. It's overrated. The lowest animal has got more courage than man has. You touch a snapping turtle with a stick and he grabs at it with his teeth. Cut his head off and the, he still won't let go. Well, we humans weren't made that way. We were born helpless. But we don't have to stay that way. Nobody's gonna call me yellow. Who has? Nobody, yet. And nobody's going to. Mm -hmm. 